Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. I'm so excited to show you all the things that I have made this month. Bonus, because it was Me Made May, I was actually filming myself in these clothes just in my sewing room so that I could use them as a Me Made May entry. So I have a lot of them, if not all of them, to show you on me in addition to on the hanger. So I think you guys will really like that. Um, if you want that for future makes videos, which I assume most of you will, let me know and I'll try and do a better job of recording them as I make them regardless of what is going on here. Because as we know, at the end of a sewing day, this ain't always there. <laughs> but okay, so where should I start? I don't know if I should go chronologically or favorites first. Um, let's just start at the top and just go randomly. Okay, first things first, I ordered the goji skirt from Deer and Doe, finally. I have been eyeing this skirt and shorts pattern probably since it came out. Um, and here's what I ended up making. Super cute, I think. The pineapples are adorable. This fabric came from Joanne. It is a rayon cotton spandex, I believe. Um, it's just got the most perfect amount of drape for a shorts pattern like this. Um, and it's just super comfortable, breathable, easy to wear. Um, literally no complaints about this. I've been wearing it with like a black tank top, a black shirt, white shirts, um, and just like cute shoes. And it's been, you know, really cute. I've really enjoyed it. Um, they do have inseam, they don't have inseam pockets. They have these like patch pockets. And to be perfectly honest, I don't love the way that they're constructed. You basically like make this whole pocket like separately, like it's, you know, fully interlined, I guess. And then you just slap it on top. Um, I would much prefer those pockets where kind of like jeans are made. Um, so I might try and rework the pattern a little bit to have some pockets that I feel are just more comfortable. These actually ended up like drooping a little bit too. I'm not sure the best way to show you that, but like, I don't know. It's a very, very minute, um, kind of picky thing that I have with the pockets on this pattern. Um, maybe it would be better out of something less drapey, but then I feel like the shorts wouldn't hang right. So maybe when I do the skirt, I'll like it more because with the skirt, you can do more of a like structured or heavy weight um, material and maybe the patch pockets would hold up better. But other than that, zero complaints about this. They are just so perfect for summer. Love them. Okay, um, next up is Simplicity 1613. Um, I think I talked about this in my plans video because I had gone to Hobby Lobby and found this adorable fabric and just thought it would be the cutest little top. So I made this um, out of it. And I think it's really adorable. I might have an issue with these straps being too long. Um, but I think that I could easily take them in the way that it's constructed. It does have a really interesting construction method um, where this little fold over is completely like self lined. Um, I, when I was making it, I was like, how in heaven's name is this going to come together? But inevitably it did. Um, other than the straps, the fit is really great and I really love it. I want to find some more stable-ish knits um, to try some of the other versions because the bodice is so good. I thought that maybe these other versions would be, um, you know, they would fit great as well. The twisty top one, the twisty neckline one is really appealing to me. But, um, but yeah, Simplicity 1613. I really like this one a lot. All right, next up, oh, next is my refashion for this month, which I posted a before and after picture on Instagram and like 
the world stopped. I don't know what happened, but I got more likes on that one image than I have like on any other image by far, by like quadruple. Um, so I guess it ended up being a really good refashion. But I basically took this giant Moo Moo. It's gonna be much easier to show you with the before and after picture, but I took this giant button up denim. I can't even call it a shift dress. I don't know. It was just like this huge monstrosity and made a cute little pinafore out of it. This is Tilly and the Buttons Cleo. Um, and I think it turned out really cute. I learned though that my machine does not love top stitching thread. Um, I stuck with it and ended up getting it done, but I think that if I ever had to do jeans or something with like a lot, a lot of top stitching thread, I might just do the gold color doubled up or something. I don't know. Cause it was, it was not having it. And yes, I was using a top stitching needle. Um, this isn't like actual, what is denim? So maybe I could have tried a jeans needle. I don't know. It was... It was not loving it. And it ended up being an eensy bainsy bit short because I did not account for there being a button right where the hemline was supposed to be. Um, it's actually still in there, <laughs> if you wanna see that. Um, I ended up just folding it up into the hem. Um, but other than that, I really do love it. It's really cute. Um, I've gotten a ton of compliments on it. And the before and after is just like night and day, which refashions should be, in my opinion. So yeah, cute little pinafore that I made for like $4. Love it. Love it. Oh, I didn't add any of the pockets from the Clio. They just didn't seem that flattering to me. I might try inseam pockets, but I don't know. You only need so many pinafores in your life, in my opinion. Okay, next up is Green Bee Amelia dress. So this is one of the kits that I got um, in my uh, Fabric Mart kits. I did a haul on this. Um, I'll link that up here somewhere so you can see it if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I ended up making it with the fabric that it came with. I was a little bit torn about that, but I did end up making it and it turned out really cute. Look at that metallic. I love how it shines in the lights in here. Um, um, it's very flattering on my figure. I am a pear shape and the way that the sleeves are make for like, I don't know, just makes your shoulders seem a little bit broader and then it comes into your waist and makes your waist super narrow and then flares out in like a subtle kind of like A-line, um, which just creates that hourglass shape that everyone wants. Um, that has inseam pockets, which are really great, that came with it. They are a little chintzy, like my whole hand doesn't go in. So in the future, I would make that bigger. Um, but yeah, I think she turned out really cute. And it is cut on the bias. So this is perfect for any fabrics that you have that have directional prints or stripes or anything like that. It would really highlight that part of the fabric. So I had never used these before, but I feel like someone commented and said that this came from the girls or one of the girls who did, who used to do um, cotton and steel. Yeah, I had not, not heard that. I didn't do any um, other research on it, but um, the instructions were okay. Um, not super easy to follow, but I mean, I got through it because I've sewn about a gajillion dresses in my short sewing career. Um, I do feel like though, maybe if you were a beginner sewer, you might have a harder time. I'm trying to remember, I sewed this at the beginning of the month, so I'm trying to remember what exactly was confusing or throwing me off. But I just remember it being a little bit like hard to comprehend. Like the way that it was explained was like, you had to stop and think like, what are they trying to get me to do? So that's my only issue with this one, but it did turn out really cute. So I guess it's worth it. Okay, the next pattern is actually, I think it's a fail, I don't know. Um, it is another one of the Fabric Mark kits. Um, it's the Sewaholic Gabriola skirt. 
and I sewed it up in the fabric that came in the kit, which I believe is a rayon chalet. And although it's really pretty, I don't know that it's very flattering. Uh, I had thought that all these panels would make it more flattering. I don't really know why now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but it just ended up being, I guess because I have a little bit of a belly left from whenever, well, I'm still dealing with it, but you know, all those health issues I was having caused like a lot of gut health issues. <laughs> um, and so I have like a little bit of like a pooch there and I feel like this kind of just sits very tight on that and then it flares out from there to the ground and so I just don't know if it's like super flattering I'll have to try it on again I've lost a little bit of weight this month so maybe that would help also even though I used the measurements the finished garment measurements somehow it still ended up humongous like I could probably take out four inches um, and it's incredibly long like it's I don't know like I don't even think like Tyra Banks or any of like the tallest supermodels in the world um, this would probably be too long for them too so um, after I got it like mostly finished and realized that it was still gonna need to like I'd have to take out the zipper and like rework the back center seam to take out all that excess um, and you know him it like I don't know probably eight inches shorter I kind of got discouraged you know it also didn't look that great on and so I was just like eh. so I didn't technically finish this one all the way because it's not hemmed and it doesn't fit <laughs> it's too big um, but I did want to show you guys how it looks sewn up I think that if you have a figure that is um, I don't even know just like I think if you just don't have like a stomach thing um, it would be it would be more flattering so that's my vote on Gabriola it could also be because the fabric is just very thin so it kind of just like hugs you you know what I mean so I'll try and rework it again this month and see if I like it any better but for now it might be a uh, a really well it wasn't that expensive because I got it in that kit and the kit was like 60% off but still um, money is money so that's the Gabriola from Soaholic. Next up, we are getting to the nitty gritty now, is doo -doo, this really cute Lisette for Butterick pattern, Butterick 6168. Um, I had told you that I was looking for just a simple little black dress is really what I was going for. Um, this one isn't even zipped up because I wore it recently. It gives me a little bit of like funeral vibes. <laughs> um, it's really hard to kind of see all the details because um, it's in black. But um, when I wear it, I don't know, it's, it's very like funeral-y to me. But that's okay because I am just rocking it out anyways. I've worn it a couple times. The only issue I have with fit is I think that the center front is a little bit big like I could take I could take out a little bit from this little tab thing here and cross these over a little bit more or do a small bust adjustment which is the right way to fix that problem um but when I'm standing up it looks fine it's only like when I sit down and kind of like the weight of the fabric pushes up and then it creates like this billowing effect on my chest do you know what I'm saying um so that's really the only the only issue I have but this is a cotton sateen yep from Joanne so very readily available easy to find um, but I do love it love wearing this dress it's very comfortable of course it has pockets like almost all my dresses have pockets in them now um, unless they're knit dresses or like super lightweight dresses they're gonna have pockets um, but yeah I thought the pattern was really great it sewed up really well um I didn't make the little belt thing um I kind of thought it was going to be a little superhero-y because of the uh little like I don't know shield looking thing that's there I don't know if you can see it better um with the line drawings but no it didn't um it is actually 
really flattering. It creates kind of like a higher um, seam line on your waist. Um, so very flattering, very comfortable. I would sew it again for sure, for sure. Okay, and the last thing I have here is so my style. Um, it was the Maya Sotis dress from Deer and Doe, and I fell in love with this. As soon as I saw their, um, like, the, I don't know, the makes that they made for the covers or for the website and all, I just knew that I was going to make version A that has the, um, all the extra ruffles. And I went to Joanne looking for like a white shirting because that's what they had used and I was just gonna copy them. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, ah, I don't know. Like I just started to say and guessing the white shirting and then I came across this linen and I was like, that's it. I just knew it as soon as I saw it. So here we are. It's hard to see, but I've got um, some video of me wearing it. Isn't that linen so perfect? It comes in three colorways too. So if you wanted um, not to have white, you could easily, I think they have a blue one that's like opposite of this, where it's like blue background and cream little doodads. And then is it gray and white? Something like that. Um, but yeah, I just love it. It is short. Also doesn't help that it's linen. So I actually pre-washed the fabric and then washed it again after I sewed it and it shrunk even more. So if you do get this linen, pre-wash it maybe three times just to make sure that it's not gonna shrink up anymore. I'm actually really nervous if I ever have to wash it again that it will be unwearable. Um, but it, the style of it, it kind of lends itself to being short because it's so billowy. If it were longer, then it would be like way too much like a nightgown. Um, so you kind of have to have that shorter hemline, but then too short of a hemline and you're showing everybody what you had for lunch and that's just, you know, not gonna work. So, but I, right now, as it is, I really do love it. It's very cute, very comfortable. Again, pockets. No, no pockets. Yeah, I was about to say. Future Lindsay was about to be upset. Yeah, pockets. So really cute. Very, very cute. I love it so much. Um, I would probably make another one um, in this version if I found a fabric that really stood out to me. You know what I mean? That would be perfect for that because it is a bigger, wider silhouette, you know? So one without all the frills, um, I would just have to find the, the right kind of fabric for that one. But I would make it again for sure. Um, especially if this one shrinks up too much. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Those are the things that I made in May. Um, let me know, what did you think of them? Um, it's kind of a wide variety in terms of like casual to, you know, something kind of even dressy depending on your lifestyle, but definitely something you could wear to work. Um, so it kind of ran the gamut there. I guess my inspiration was just kind of like all over the place, which is totally fine. Um, but I hope you all had a successful or relatively successful sewing month in May as well. Let me know about it in the comments and until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.